I'm Jordan. And I'm Rosanna. And on this podcast, we explore how to take life off autopilot and relentlessly pursue a life worth living together. together. Hello, and welcome to Season 7, Episode 4 of the Relentless Pursuit Podcast, Proactive versus Reactive. So first of all, um, I wanted to, we didn't want uh, the podcast anniversary, the podiversary, to pass us by going unacknowledged. Is that that the official term? It's a podiversary? Yeah. So as of June 24th, which is our wedding anniversary, uh, that was also the date that we chose for airing the first episode in 2020. Uh, So since we just passed June 24th, we wanted to wish the Relentless Pursuit podcast a happy two years. We wanted to wish ourselves a happy anniversary. So happy anniversary and podiversary. And how many episodes are we at? Uh, Good question. 70... 70-something. 77? 78? Yes. Some of you folks out there do the counting and, and let us know. So we're inching our way towards 100. I think we can hit 100 by the end of the year. There you go. Yeah. Hashtag goals. All right. So that leads us into today's conversation. This is actually Ben. So the way part of the podcast functions is we have a long, ever-expanding list of topics that eventually become shows. I think this has been on that list for a long time, and we never quite got around to turning it into an episode. So I'm glad that we're finally here today talking about this concept that I feel uh, kind of ebbs and flows throughout a lot of our decision making. Yeah. And, you know, as when we look at that list, I think a lot of it sometimes like we look at it and he's like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I'm not feeling this one or I'm feeling that one or, you know, we, like what you're inspired to have a conversation about. Um, and even this week I was having a hard time. I said, can you just choose? Can you just choose a topic? And so he chose. Um, but I think it actually um, is, you know, as all things are kind of timely and relevant based on kind of just uh, how our last couple of weeks, you know, have been going. And so it was kind of good to uh to think about this. So if you have kids or a job, um, you're constantly, if you notice, reacting to people. Which is most people, right? You have kids or a job or both. And yeah, there's just a lot to react to. But people's requests, their demands, their needs, their wants, their desires, right? Like people are constantly telling you what they need from you. Um, And if you're like me at all, uh, completely and utterly imperfect, that can be really taxing and oftentimes aggravating. So how do we live the life we say we want while finding fulfillment, joy, adventure, and peace um, when we have so many kind of demands and requests and needs and wants put on us? And I think um, what I've come to find just kind of in thinking about this topic is that it's the decision to be proactive with what we say we want. You know, how often do we let our conditions and our circumstances be the driving force behind our decisions? Right. Because this is going on, I can't do this or uh, I don't know. I'm really busy with this. So there's no time for that. But proactive people allow their values to determine the choices that they make. And proactive people act rather than being acted upon. And so in, you know, the hustle and bustle of life and depending on what you have going on, whether it's what you've planned or the curveballs that you're thrown, you know, it's our decision to be proactive and to continue to pursue that those things that we say we want. That reminds me of a poster that, that was on my sister's yeah. door. I think I had a picture uh, of, of some like four lawyers dog or playing sure. whack-a-mole and with a the prayer classic Chuck E. Cheese and game. And I'm sure we've all um, seen where this. Where it's like just like certain like things are coming up and then you're forced to engage. You're forced to respond. Lord, help me. And you're just um, kind of in this like cycle of never take really responsibility ahead, for what I have control over. Popping help you let go of the things I don't have I wish everybody could over, see your reenactment the of the whack a mole and your flailing arms as you're talking right yeah, now. Yeah. Okay. Very important it's to what you just said. Um, so, was that your, was that your definition? No, that was okay. just kind of my introduction. So, that would be oh, okay. proactive. Ooh, gets better. Uh, when someone we can takes head into a reactive approach, you know how much to life, I love they wait for events to occur. All right, so proactivity is a balance between planning for what you can control and accepting and adapting to what you can react to them with varying degrees of success or failure. Mm -hmm. Um, And that just reminds me of a conversation I had with a friend um, months ago, probably even within the last year. Um, And she was at the time kind of like, you know, that's so great that like you get up before your kids get up to like intentionally work out or have your cup of coffee or read or whatever it is. She's like, you know, it made me realize like you're you're so much more in control of your day because you're like already awake you're already like, you know, your brain is on and you're ready to run. And she, and she had said, you know, like, um, 
I wake up to my kids like crying or spilling milk, pouring it into cereal. And she's like, and I was doing that for a while. And it made me realize like I wasn't in control of the day. Like I wasn't ready to get up. And but then it put me in a like a a reactive position where you're just putting out fires instead of kind of being in control and managing the situation. And it kind of shifted her perspective on maybe what her morning needed to look like to be more successful, to be more in control and more in charge. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about mornings, because I feel like this uh, maybe best illustrates how, you know, how this may pertain to other daily routines or even workplace habits or, or longer term behaviors. So I, I think about this a lot in the mornings because, yeah, when you wake up, the last thing you, that you want to be in is in a posture of, like you said, like of having to suddenly react to things that you didn't plan on. And then you can get you could get through a good percentage of your day and feel like, man, like I've, I've been busy all day, like reacting to like, you know, this kid needs this or this is broken or the, the dog or the car, right? Always responding to all of those things. But you get through a good percentage of your day and think, man, I still didn't do anything. So how can we be so busy and then still? Well, and not it's not that anything? we didn't do anything, right? Because you may have already mopped the floor because a gallon of milk spilled and you may have already had to walk the dog because it was barking and you have already answered emails. But it's like, all of these things that have kind of like clouded your, you know, your life's inbox, but it's nothing that's on your list of things that you need to achieve or accomplish. Or that are important to you. Right. And so I think that's the difference. It's not that you didn't do anything. It's just that you, you didn't do any of the things that you needed or wanted to do. And and I also think that there's a couple different things that, that could come up. So one is, so we're just going further with the kids' examples, like, Kids will spontaneously need things that you need to respond to. But um, then, I, but you mentioned like email as well. And I think of the same thing with anything related to electronics, whether it's text messages or social media. Uh, um, a lot of the time we kind of invite that, that distraction into our mornings when we don't need to. And I, I've, I've done this myself. And I know it's a pretty common American habit is like before we're out of bed, we're already on our phones. And then right away, there are posts on social media or there are emails in their inbox in our inboxes that we had no intention of responding to or even thinking about. But now, because it's right there in front of us, now that puts us in that reactive position to think about and respond to uh, a post that we see that we had no design of incorporating into our day or we're opening email and now we don't know the content of the email, the requests or the needs of those messages until we open it. And then that puts us in a position of needing or wanting to respond to those instead of distancing ourselves from that first and then thinking, what what do I want to do with my morning? Yeah, and I think that, ha- you know, part of uh, something that we'll address later is kind of just even boundaries with really how your you know, setting up your day, how you're setting up your life and the ways in which you prepare for that. Like how if you're not preparing for it, then you're going to be distracted by it. And then that kind of puts you again in a reactive position where you cannot be in control of what you need to do, um, but you are reacting to what others are kind of imposing upon you. Yeah. And so I, I, I like that idea, that image of waking up before the kids, because then you can really dictate for yourself, like, all right, what's important to me? And now I'm setting aside time to make sure I do that because I know like those needs will come up, like the fires will happen today, but I've already taken steps on my own to do what's important to me so that when those things do come up, I'm not in this reactive position. And then I I feel like I'm playing catch up. I'm already ahead. Yeah. Um, so it's a safe space here on the podcast. And I think a lot of times we, you know, we talk about a lot of topics, we give kind of takeaways and points and we go through definitions and all of that. Um, but you're about to get real here. Yeah. I think it's a little time to get real with this. Um, because I talked about, you know, the example of the morning routine and a friend like, you know, changing hers kind of with that notion of like, yeah, like I need to be more in control of my day. So confession in the last, I would say three months, uh, maybe even a little bit longer, my morning routine has suffered greatly. Um, I think just based on just kind of, you know, a shift in like uh, career and kids and just, you know, as I've told you, the last year has been a lot from like July of last year to July of this year. 
a lot has happened. Um, and I, I'm just tired. I am just dog tired. And I realized that, um, or not even realized that, I just decided I was going to prioritize like sleep. And by prioritizing sleep, you know, instead of getting up at five in the morning, I'm sleeping until like 6.30. Actually, I've been pushing it to seven lately. But like... Yeah, you sleep I'm, past seven. It's like, hey, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. And I think that the response there is, I'm not okay. And so that's why I'm sleeping more. Um, but so, so do you think, and I don't mean to interrupt your flow, but like, is part of sleeping in for you, like in a way, like avoiding some of the things you know you're going to have to respond to in the day? Well, so this is where I'm going with this. So here, my, you know, thinking is like, okay, like I'm just going to sleep in a little bit longer. Um, and surely because it's summer and the days are longer and you're home, I don't have to get up at five in the morning to work out and to go to the gym. I can for sure get it done some other time during the day. Um, and I can get up at, at, you know, sleep until my body says it's time to get up, which is good. We need sleep, um, and have my cup of coffee and just like take the first 45 minutes of my day for myself. And you know what I've realized in the last few months that I've been doing this? It's a freaking disaster. I do not get up. I do not get a workout in. I do not get to drink my coffee quietly. I do not get 45 minutes well, to myself. Not, yeah, the later you pour that cup, the less quiet it's going to be And I've here. been in a very reactive position. And like if I'm looking at kind of even just like my mood and my productivity um, and just how I'm feeling about things, like I feel like <laughs> I am not any better for it, nor am I in a great place. Um, and so, you know, now that I'm kind of watching that, I'm like, Oof, that's rough. Yeah. So what are my options? My options are to be more proactive about how I want to start my day in order to feel fulfilled that I'm going to get the things that I want done and to cross things off my list. I thought that maybe a break from a routine would be good. Um, and well, I think, maybe. and I think overall sometimes that's needed, right? There are certain rhythms um, to life and to timings and to, and to busy seasons. And, and you do need that. Um, but maybe instead of having like two days where I sleep in and, you know, not working out or not X, Y, and Z, um, I thought that just kind of giving it up would be the break that I need. And I'm finding that um, I feel a little bit lost without it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Like if, if I want to do anything with my day, then there's a 90% chance that I have to do it in the morning. Otherwise, it like won't get done. Um, and I don't think like as far as proactivity versus reactivity goes, I know like this, the mornings, I think, serve as a metaphor for some of these bigger things. But that's probably one area that w one really practical area that we can experiment with and just see how we can structure our routines day to day to make sure that that happens. Um, there's an article. I read a lot of articles that looked at uh, like proactivity and re re reaction as like business leaders and um, but the one that I connected with the most was actually uh, written by Tim Ferriss, and it was the title of it was "Make Before Manage." It was kind of a weird title, but he basically meant that when it comes to when it comes to your day, there's a lot of things that you're you're managing that you just kind of have to do, or things that you uh, need to respond to. Um, but how how critical are they that those are the things that you respond to first? And so his basic um, uh, wisdom was m make or like be proactive, do something constructive with your day before you put yourself in a position of having to manage the rest. Because life is just a lot of management. It's just a lot of stuff that has to get done. Um, so yeah, like maybe maybe it happens in the morning because you're waking up early or just because you're, you're just putting off the stuff that can wait for a time that's more convenient to it. And then the stuff that's most important then you front load. Right. And that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, oftentimes we, we get more done in a certain time of day. And it's usually like the first half of the day because like then the rest like then snowballs into other people and other things and other responsibilities. Um, and so, you know, kind of just thinking about this proactive reactive, I think there there's definitely many benefits to being proactive. Um, and I think that this shift in my schedule to a non morning schedule um, for the sake of kind of rest and, and recovery, which I thought I needed, is actually <laughs> doing the opposite. Um, and those three things are when you're proactive, you have greater stability, less stress, and more control. And what's funny is I felt less stable, more stressed, and less control. 
Um, and so once you start being proactive, you'll find a greater sense of stability and security. Reactive people respond to those short-term inconveniences as they happen, whereas proactive people can wake up each day knowing they've done what they can to prepare. And it doesn't it does that doesn't even start like in the morning when I wake up. Like it even starts from the night before. Like if I'm going to wake up early to be proactive and like get a start or a jump on something, it's because the night before I've made a list of like what are those four big things I need to hit tomorrow. Um, you know, after my, you know, morning coffee and workout, like what are what, what's on my to-do list for that day? But that start, starts the night before. And then knowing that I'm getting up early means going to bed earlier the night before and setting out my stuff and preparing. And so like without planning for that and it's not happening, I just, there's less stability. Um, and I get more stressed because I feel like I don't have control over the things that I want because I'm constantly reacting. Yeah. Uh, and then I feel like I have just, you know, less, more stress and then less control. Um, when I'm proactive, like I can take charge. And then because I've crossed those things off my list, I feel good and I feel like secure. And yeah. so I feel like that's just kind of what's been missing. It's kind of like this, this feeling of, of control. Um, that I had forgotten about this until I was preparing for this episode, but the, the book seven habits of highly effective people somewhere on this bookshelf behind us, actually the, the first habit is be proactive, not reactive. I was like, Oh yes, that's true. And it talks a lot about like, there's, there's just stuff that you cannot control. We'll take the weather for example, but there's all kinds of circumstances and people that we just, they're just going to happen. Um, and sometimes it's where our focus is at. Like if we're constantly focusing on the stuff that we cannot control and we're letting that drive us and we're letting that stress us out and we're constantly anticipating or wishing about those things, then that's where our focus goes that makes us feel worse and more stressed and overwhelmed. And then we lose focus on the things that we actually can control. And, and we feel like, this was the kicker, was that you feel like there's less that you actually can control. But then if you shift your focus to the opposite, then the opposite happens, where if you are constantly focusing on what you can control, then you lose focus on what you can't, or it doesn't drive you quite as much. You feel more in control of your life, and uh, overall, like you tend to be able to just be more proactive, more action-oriented towards the things that you want. Yeah. I mean, when I think about even just like bring being proactive um, and kind of prepping for uh, your days, your weeks, your months, your year by like setting goals or, you know, having priorities or, or discussing your values. Um, I think what's important, too, is like, do you leave space in your life? You know, we call it margin, error, breathing room for disruption just in case. Like, is there a buffer, right? Like I'm a wedding coordinator. And so when I'm setting timelines with couples, like I know how long things take on a wedding day. People are like, I, I never really understand how you know. I'm like, well, this is how long it takes and this is how long it'll actually take because, you know, you have to like figure in error, disruption, uh, someone totally messing up, someone running late. And so like into those schedules, I build this buffer around things. Um, and what's really great is that like on a wedding day, like I build it in in such a way where people are like, man, we were like on time. We were actually ahead of schedule all day because I know how to manage that because I'm looking at it objectively from the outside. But how often am I doing that in my own life where I'm like, OK, this is the day today. These are the things I need to get done. Like what are what are the, the things that I can't account for that I need to kind of add in so that I know like when I need to leave or uh, how much I'm actually going to get done in a day. Like I've seen your to do lists. You know, and I like look and sometimes I laugh. I'm like, okay, how much do you think you're actually going to get done with four kids and, and me and the dog and your dad Takes visiting? Like, right? just to make the list. Right. So, um, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with intentionality um, and planning, which reminds me of a quote that I found yeah. uh, from Dwight Eisenhower, who said, in preparing for battle, I have always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. And that's the thing. The minute you make a plan, usually... The crap hits the fan and it's out the window. But the 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 time that you put into planning and thinking it through can often kind of like help you get to where you need to go, even if the plan isn't followed to the T. You've already thought of the contingency plan. You've already th thought of like a next step or what comes before, or what comes after. Yeah, and so you... it gives you a better perspective and a better understanding of like how you can do a workaround at the last minute because you've actually thought through it already. Yeah, because you, you understand it well well enough to react well 
at, you know, at that time. You know, since we're getting real here, um, I was thinking about this in terms of my experience as an administrator as well, because in working in a school, like a lot of the job is the administrator is to deal with uh, the fires that come up each day. Um, whether it's you know, student behaviors or academic issues or parent questions, or, you know, there's all kinds of things kind of coming at you. And I feel like um, a lot of my experience was, you know, maybe subconsciously putting myself constantly in the stream of reaction. I just, I wanted to be, I, I thought I was being proactive kind of, but I'd be like always like over checking my email, always kind of fretting over like little details and it was just horrible time management, but uh, I felt like I wanted to make everybody happy, which meant that I was just constantly like jumping to respond to every little thing that I could. And maybe in most of those things, I did it well, but over, and this is I'm kind of me transitioning to like, you know, beyond just the, the daily routines, but like over the span of time, I wasn't really being proactive with I think being the kind of, of, of leader or kind of building in certain, um, you know, programs or, or systems or things that could have made that more efficient or could have made the school a better place because I was constantly distracted or disrupted or just kind of, you know, waiting to be in this, this posture of reacting to the next thing and playing catch up and never actually getting ahead. So more worried about clearing the inbox than taking care of the heart of what was in the inbox. Yeah, it was, yeah, I guess there was, there's kind of a, a spirit to the job of, uh, you know, you're in a, an excellent position to be able to have like a great positive influence um, over the school. And there, there certainly were those opportunities and moments for me that I came through with that. But I feel like there, there could have been more. And I feel like this expands to life as well, where sure, we could go through a day and feel like I was just responding to this, this and that and didn't get anything done. But if that's how we constantly live, then we can do a week of that. Man, I didn't get anything done this week or a month or even just a year of, man, I look back at the past year and what do I have to show for it? Like I was busy the whole time. But at the end of, of this year, I have nothing of substance that I can say like I, I have created because I never made that space to make that a priority and to proactively pursue it. So it's whatever I wanted to do. It was kind of this wish that I never fulfilled for myself. And so I think that's part of the mentality that I, f I feel like in some domains of my life, I'm very, you know, very good or very in control of taking positive steps forward. And in other domains, I'm far more reactive. And so I think this conversation is good to maybe try to expose those different areas where it's like, where, where do I have kind of this, this wish that I don't want at this time next year to say I never was proactive towards fulfilling that or towards resolving it um, because I was like, allowing other things in that area to get in the way. Well, and I think that begs the question too, like what are you inviting to happen to you? You know, if you are not prepared to put some boundaries in place to protect like your values, your goals, or your dreams, then you're going to be constantly in a position to only react. And so like what boundaries do we need as individuals, as parents, as spouses, like whatever that is, in order to give us room to be proactive in the things that set our soul on fire. So I think that's one thing that I, you know, as you're talking that came up. Um, the other thing too is like, we have to remember to be prepared to play the long game. So like I said, I've kind of been off these last few months and I've been out of my routine and out of my habits and now I'm kind of feeling lost and... The, the answer is that I need to be more proactive. Um, but whether it's your career, your family, your workouts, your health, like one bad day, one bad week, a bad month, a bad year, like cannot determine who you are and what you do. And so even just saying, yeah, you know what, the, these last few weeks or this this chunk of time at this job, like it did not produce any fruit for me. Um, but that doesn't mean I can't start again tomorrow. And so no one's looking for 100% perfection right? Yeah. I'm reading this book right now uh, by a trainer. I follow him on Instagram. I don't even know how to say his last name. I think his name is, I'm going to butcher it. So I'm not even going to say what his name is, but he wrote a book and I'm reading it. And he was talking What's about the like, the name of the book, the The book is called eat it. Um, so it's just kind of talking about like diets, habits, nutrition, Isn't that a Michael Jackson song. That's beat it. Um, but ba, ba, he's, ba, 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 ba. are you okay? Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, you know that it's talking about no one's expecting perfection, but it's about consistency. 
And so we're not going to be perfect. We can't expect to be perfect, but like we can maybe shoot to be perfect like 80% of the time. And that's a more realistic goal, right? So that it's it doesn't have to be seven days a week that you're, you know, doing this or doing that or doing it that way. But like consistency over time is really what's going to make the biggest difference. And so, yeah, like when stuff gets in the way, right? And we can only be reactive like, okay, like we're going to have to like, we can't control that. And we have to say this, this too shall pass. It's only for a time and get back to it as soon as we can, when we can. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important, like that we realize that like, I always demand perfection. um, And I think I'm either all in or all out. And that's really not what it is. Like right now I've been all out. And now I'm afraid to get all back in. But no one's no one's requesting that of me. It's just being consistent a little bit at a time. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like I've been this way at times, or maybe some of you listeners have been, or we all know somebody that's like, you feel like in their life, it's it's constant drama or turmoil or bad luck. And it's just like kind of one thing after another of what seems to be out of control. And I think there are times where I felt that way. Um, but it's like this shift in perspective, like of... Um, like, okay, like knowing the difference between, all right, I can't control this, so I'm I'm just going to let that happen and not fret over it, but w- kind of reassessing what can I control. And I think sometimes we have more control than we really realize. There was a story in an article that I read, and uh, this referenced the um, Seven Habits book, so it might be in that book as well, but it was about a Holocaust survivor. And a lot of powerful stories like, come from Holocaust survivors. This guy talked about how the, there's a stimuli, and the, no matter what the stimulus is, then um, more reactive people kind of jump immediately to a response to the stimulus, whereas there's, there's actually a gap between the stimulus and the response. And so the Holocaust survivor said, like, okay, the stimulus is the Holocaust and his experience in that, like watching you know, and, and living through all of the horrible experiences that he did watching loved ones die and you know all all the other things that came with his experience but there's a like he didn't have to respond by giving up hope or by hating um or by any of the other things that he felt like were a lot of we could just say are natural responses to that there's there's a gap where a decision can be made about how you choose to respond to those things so a lot of it was out of his control but he was still in control of his thoughts and his emotions and his response to the things that were taking place. And that gave him a great deal of equanimity to be able to, you know, survive those times and to go and live a thriving life afterwards. And so I um, am grateful for the life that I lead, which is nowhere near the Holocaust. But at the same time, there's stimuli that, that happen that could, could potentially elicit a response but we're we're in control of our thoughts and and of our our next behavior or our next emotion and um, just recognizing that I think goes a, a long way. Other thoughts in general about proactive versus reactive. Um, for me, I like all right. So I'll give another example for our listeners um, because I've been you know off and on we've mentioned that um, you know one of my goals over the long term is to develop a little bit more of a real estate business. And so I think I've spent, I'm a really good student. So I've spent a lot of time reading about that. And that, that can feel proactive. And it is to an extent, but true proactivity is like taking action. And so um, even just yesterday, I went and met with a couple of guys that I really had no business talking to, um, like super intelligent, super experienced guys about a specific property that they own. And um, it was a great experience for me, but I feel like I, I felt kind of proud of myself to be in that position, even though I'm underqualified, I think, to be having those kinds of conversations, interactions, like just, you know, turning some of the the knowledge that I've tried to gain into action and taking some of the steps that I have to at least get myself in the door of places where I never would have even a few months ago, um, I feel good about. And so that's one area where I feel like that proactivity is is starting to build into, you know, taking what I guess started as a wish list and turn it into something more tangible. One thing that's helped though is that you've made some space for me to do that too. Like I love working in the mornings and you've also, even just over the last few days, like, just allowed me. I have acquiesced my plans. and Right. You're like, well, why don't you 
your suggestion to me was to like, why don't you go out in the mornings, like take the time to do the X, Y, and Z things that you want to do. And then the idea really was to switch. And then in the afternoons you would work and then I could do the summer, whatever with the kids. But we have to accept what we cannot control. (laughs) Right. So there's a lot that's come up as well, but um, I'm grateful for you. And I think this is where the spouse part comes in, where we can encourage one another to be more proactive in the areas of life that matter and try to make space and opportunity for one another to be proactive because otherwise we could both be busy all day on household stuff and then feel like at the end of the day we're just defeated whereas if we have like a a good partnership with that then that can that can help us both go further yeah but even so now if we're like you know shifting this you know even back to like marriage and roles and, and goals and making space, you know, okay, proactive people act rather than being acted upon. Okay, great. So you have stuff that you want to accomplish. And I give you that space. But I think like, if you're listening, and you have a spouse, like sometimes I, like, I understand what you're doing. And I understand what you're trying to accomplish. But like, at the same time, like, that's not where like my passion is. And so sometimes like, I feel like, you know, there's a disconnect for me, or like, I know you need to do this. It's and like, I, why am I making time for this? Correct. <laughs> um, right? Like, is it is it generating, what is it generating at this moment? It's actually generating nothing at this moment, but it will hopefully... It's actually costing. I think. Correct. <laughs> so, you know, I, you know, I think sometimes with like spouses or with dreams or with goals or with plans, like sometimes we just don't understand each other's stuff. And I think that that's okay. Like, I, and I do understand what you're trying to do. Like yeah. gener- generating future like wealth for our family, like long term, pay for kids college to like, like, I get that. And I understand that that's so important. But like on a Tuesday morning, like, I just need to work. And so, you know, I, I there's a balance there, you know, and I think when you're talking about any topic, and you're married, and you have family, like, it's never easy. It's never like clear cut, like people get their toes stepped on people are disappointed. And, and I think that's just life. Um, but I think we have to proactively like love our spouse. I think we have to intentionally set some space for each other. Um, I think we need to push each other. And so I that's part of the conversation too. Like we can react to everything that's going on. Um, but how are we proactively loving our spouses to do what they want to do? Right. Let's not make ourselves one more thing for the spouse to react to or one more excuse um, that our spouse has for not doing the things that they'd prefer to be proactive towards. Great. So I think if you want to be proactive, you have to be strategic. I think I think that's part of it. You can't just wake up and be like, oh, I'm going to be proactive today. Like today's proactiveness like depends on like last night's preparation. So to be strategic, I think you should start with some of the following questions. And I think these are all things that we've kind of asked during this episode. But like, do you set intentional goals for the day? Right. How much plan or prep do you use on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? And maybe that's just for you. Maybe that's for your business. Maybe it's for your family. Maybe it's with your spouse. Like it doesn't just happen and it's not going to just happen unless there's that plan. Well, you, yeah, you, you could make time for yourself to do it and then you could sit down and be like, OK, like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Right. So, you know, it takes like longer conversations. I think it takes it actually takes time for you to sit and think and plan. And sometimes we can't just like sit down and be like, OK, let me sit and think and plan and nothing comes. So like, are you giving yourself space in your in your world, in your schedule now to kind of like sit through and think through those things? Because we're just not going to know all the time. Sometimes it takes a bit of searching to kind of figure out what that is. Um, Are you leaving space for error, breathing room, disruption in your day? Uh, What are you inviting to happen to you, whether that's intentional or unintentional, whether you're sabotaging yourself or whether um, you're just weak with boundaries? You know, what boundaries are you putting into place to protect your time and your dreams? And then, you know, also, are you prepared to play the long game? Whether it's career, family, workouts, health, you know, one bad day, again, one bad week, month, even a year, even a career or, or a three-year period, like, does not have to determine what comes next. I'd add one more to that list, too. And I would say, what's something that you actually do have control over that maybe on the surface you have originally historically perceived not having control over that thing? Because, I, I mean, I felt that way. Like, oh, I could never do that, you know, fill in the blank. Well, if you actually break it down, then it is doable. Other people have done it. So what steps could I feasibly take? Or 
just go back to that definition, proactive people act. I could never do that. Challenge yourself to go out and go do it today. Yeah, go do it today. Go do it. it. So what do you think? I think that we need to have a conversation about what you want your mornings to look like. <laughs> and how I can help so you So much, that. so much there. Or I want you. to simultaneously sleep until nine and also get up at five and work out. And so here we are at seven with a cup of coffee and a grumpy mom. Yeah. It sounds like a 5 a.m. workout, a 7 a.m. nap, and you can get to work by nine. There you go. All right. All right. Well, we'll continue to have that conversation between us. What are the conversations, the thoughts, the proactivity that you want to pursue? Um, I do recommend that you check out the first, at least the first habit in the seven habits of highly effective people. And of course, check out the relentlesspursuitpodcast.com, sign up for the newsletter, and hit us up with any thoughts, ideas, or questions or reactions to the show. And finally, Rosanna, if they go to iTunes, what should they do? They should leave a five-star rating and a glowing review. After all, it's our podiversary, and what better way to celebrate than to give us the gift of words of affirmation. That's right. So go be proactive on iTunes, people. All right. So we hope you have another great week, and we're looking forward to enjoying the rest of the season and the rest of the summer with you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to today's show. We hope you will use this conversation as a starting point for your own. We hope you're encouraged to think and act more intentionally. If you want to learn more, you can visit our website, therelentlesspursuitpodcast.com, where you can find notes on today's show, plus additional blog posts, and you can subscribe to our free members list. Please subscribe leave a review, and share with your friends. Facebook and Instagram are two great places to connect with us for daily doses of our quotable quotes, behind the scenes, and real-time photos, videos, and challenges. Until next time, let us know how you are taking life off autopilot. And relentlessly pursuing what matters.